Asher from the Technique here, and in today's video, we'll be reviewing the quite expensive Razer Death Adder Pro Mod. Is this worth the $70 that you're paying? We'll be answering that question in this video, and we'll also be comparing it to the last mouse I reviewed, the Logitech G402 Gaming Mouse, which is a bit cheaper, it being $42. Now this has got five buttons in total. Of course, there'll be the left, the right click, and the scroll wheel but there's also these extra two buttons on the side, which as default will act as back and forward, but on the Razer program, you can actually customize every single button to whatever you want, which is similar to the Logitech gaming mouse. As for the Logitech gaming mouse, it has eight buttons in total, and you're probably thinking straight away, well, it has more buttons, so that's really good. Not necessarily. When you get lots of buttons, it can get a bit hard to try and press the right button, without accidentally hitting another button. Also, it could take some time to work out which button is which. Also, on the Logitech gaming mouse, you can't use it in both hands. It's mainly a right-handed mouse. With the Razer mouse, it's made more towards a right-handed person, but you can still use it in your left hand. It just might be a little harder to press the buttons, but it's still ergonomic in that way. Talking about ergonomics, the Razer Death Adder Chroma is very ergonomic. One feature that stands out most to me is when you have it in your hand, right here you have a spot to rest your palm. Which when you first see this video, it might, it might not see, seem like a big thing, but once you use this for a long time, you'll understand what I mean. One key thing that will make this mouse feel more comfortable is that the main contact point is actually right here, except on the Logitech mouse it'll be a bit further down. Another feature for this mouse that will make it look better than the other mouse is this actually has RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. And with most cheap RGB systems, the white will look sort of blue colored, but because this is quite an expensive mouse, the red, green, and blue combined makes the white look very organic. Now onto the build quality. They're both made out of very good quality plastic. But the cable on the Razer Death Adder Chroma seems to be a more braided design. Meaning it could probably last longer and it looks better. As for the cable length, the Razer mouse is about 10cm longer than the Logitech mouse. Now not that 10cm is going to make much of a difference. The cable length is around 2 meters long, which is enough for what most people need. Well I mean, unless your computer is connected to a TV or something, you really don't need a long cable. If you did want a long cable, you could just buy a $5 cable extension off eBay or Amazon. So the Razer mouse is more ergonomic than the Logitech mouse. It has less buttons, but it's easier to but it's easier to press the buttons. Whereas these have smaller buttons, but there's more of them. So you it's easier for you to press the wrong button. And it might take a week for you to get used to to get used to pressing the buttons. The Razer mouse actually does not have a DPI indicator. Although you could set one of these, any of these buttons to the DPI, it does not have a DPI button either. The Logitech mouse has a couple of kilobytes of inbuilt memory as well. So if you plug this mouse into another computer, it will actually save that profile onto another computer. But I don't think that the Razer mouse has inbuilt memory. Simple things like the scroll wheel is a lot more ergonomic. On this mouse, it seems to be a bit more clunkier, but on this mouse, it's more smooth. The precision on this is 10,000 DPI. After long hours of usage on both mouses, I find that this mouse is a lot more ergonomic. It has a more supportive rest for your palm. But now we'll be jumping onto the computer and we'll be doing some testing and taking a tutorial of the Razer software. Okay, so I've got both of the mouses connected and I've got both of the softwares here up and running. So on the Logitech gaming software, the user interface seems a lot more friendly. It's got the home page here, but it's got all the tabs with a visual representation. Whereas on the Razer software, instead of having a home page, it just starts out with a customized page. Now I guess most people wouldn't really care if it's user friendly or not. But if you're a beginner to this, it will definitely make, make it a lot easier. So it's got all the customization of all the buttons here.
And you can assign pretty much pretty much anything to whatever you want. For instance, if I click on the right click, it's got default here. But you can select between all of these. If I hit keyboard function, you can type in the keys. You can type in any key that you want and it'll save it as that. I'll leave it as default because I want my right click to just be a right click. It's got the same with every other. It's got the same with every other button. Under performance, it'll have the DPI, the ac the acceleration, which I like to leave as default. Though I can't even um put that. It seems to be pretty easy to create profiles as well, and the profile name. Under the lighting, although this has RGB. It's not as customizable as the Logitech mouse, even though it only has blue. You've got three options. Static, which means it'll just stay the one color. If you select static, though, you can select which, which color you want. It's got a spectrum cycling, which it will just cycle from each color. But you can't actually... But you can't actually change the speed of the cycling. And then it's got none, so it'll just display no light then. It's got the same it's got the same for the scroll wheel and the logo. Under calibration It's got the surface calibration. So you can turn that on and off. If you have it on, you got the razor mats. Um you got the razor mats, so if you have a mouse a mouse pad that's by razor, you can do that. So you can select the different types. You can add other mats as well. But there are other tabs up here as well. So it's got the macros here. They've got the Chroma apps up here, and then the stats. Now we'll open up another thing here, and if you hit enable, then it will an analyze your gameplay and give you statistics. So that's pretty cool that you can do all that. Now onto the Logitech software. Straight away, straight away you can switch it in between the inbuilt memory on the mouse and the memory that it will store on the computer. So if you're constantly moving computers, you would want to switch it to the mouse. Now straight away, if I switch it to mouse you, mouse memory, you'll see that some tabs change. This is because the memory on the mouse actually isn't that much. It's only a couple of kilobytes, which is less than a megabyte. So you can't actually store as much stuff as you could if you were to save it on your computer. Most computers these days come with at least 200 gigabytes or more. So you got the pointer settings and the DPI and all that here as well. But before how I said that you got more customization on the lighting, if you look here, although it only has blue as a light, you can adjust the brightness of the light, the breathing effect, which is if it goes on and off, how fast the breathing effect is, if it's always on, if there's a sleep timer. Now there was actually a sleep timer on the on the razor mouse as well. This is the fuse and engine settings, which will read how fast your mouse speed is. And this is the analysis tab, which was on the Razer software as well. So both softwares have mostly the same things, but I find that the user interface on the Logitech software is a lot more user-friendly for someone who's a beginner and, might, and may not know this sort of stuff. There's also a lot more animation on the, Log on the Logitech software. I don't know if my recording software can pick up the animation, but basically when I change between items, boxes and the mouse will move around. It also has a visual representation of the mouse when you apply that. For instance, it has the breathing effect and all that on the mouse on the picture. So is the Razer mouse worth the extra $30 that you're paying? Now I think if you want to get a budget mouse, if you want to get a budget gaming mouse, the Logitech mouse is probably better for that.
Also, if you're someone that's constantly gaming using all those extra buttons on the side, the Logitech mouse has that. Instead of the Razer mouse, it only has it only has two extra buttons. Now that can be good as well, but they both have their ups and downs. Write your opinion on which mouse is better for the money below. I would personally choose the Razer mouse, but huge thanks to the person who I could actually lend the mouse from. I'll have his channel on the screen now, up here. If you want to see my other Logitech, Logitech mouse video, it will be here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, it will be here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.